God, you gathered us here. You brought us here, O oh God, this evening, O oh Father. Father God, to seek you. We seek your face this evening, O oh Lord. We need your presence this evening, O oh God. Lord, how we need you, Lord, more than any other day, O oh God. Lord, more than any other moment, O oh God, in our lives, O oh God. Lord, hallelujah, we need you this evening. Holy Spirit of God, Lord, we trust in you. We rely on you. Hallelujah. Blessed Holy Spirit, you are the promised Holy Spirit. You are living in us, O God. You are greater in us. You are greater. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit of God, we need you this evening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you from the bottom of our heart, O Father. Lord, we want to thank you for all your goodness, O God. Lord, we want to thank you for all your blessings, O God. Lord, we want to thank you. We remember all your goodness. Lord, we remember the salvation, O God. Lord, we remember, Lord, from where you picked us up from, O Lord. You picked us, O Lord, from the mighty clay and put our feet on the rock, O Father. Thank you, Lord, for you are the rock, O Father. You are the salvation for us. You are the strength. You are the shield. You are the strong and the mighty tower. You are our fortress, O God. You are our everything, O God. Without you, we can do nothing, O God. Apart from you, we are nothing, O God. Apart from Christ, we are nobody, O Lord. Lord, you made us somebody, O God, in your sight, O Father. You made us precious, O Lord. You made us your children, O God. Lord, hallelujah, you made us born again, O Lord. Thank you. You gave the right to become your children, O God. Children born not of natural descent or human decision or husband's will of God but we are children born of you we are children born of you we are authorized of God we are authorized to use your name, O oh God. Lord, you gave us the authority. You gave us the power, O oh God. Lord, you gave us the right to use your name, O oh God. Lord, you gave us authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions, O oh God. Lord, we are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the privilege, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the awesome privilege, O oh God, you have given us. We are seated in with Christ on the heavenliness, O oh God. Lord, you are. You have given us all the spiritual blessings, O oh God, in Jesus Christ. We have the redemption, O oh God. We are forgiven O oh God we are the children of the most high we are the servants of the living God Lord, Lord hallelujah we worship you we praise your name the Lord we bless your holy name what shall we do O oh God for the blessings you have poured upon our lives O oh God Lord other than lift up the cup of salvation and worship and praise your name declare your praises what more can we do O oh God what, what else shall we do O oh God Lord this evening O oh God as a body of Christ O oh Father Lord Lord, having redeemed by the blood of Jesus, and Lord, we come to your throne room, O God, confidently, boldly, as your children, O God, hallelujah, we seek your face, we come to your bosom, O God, Daddy, we love you this evening, Lord, hallelujah, more than any other day, we want to say we love you, Lord, for you, Lord, we were sinners, you loved us, O God, Lord, with the everlasting love you loved us oh God you drawn us by your loving kindness oh God Lord hallelujah grace is oh God Lord better than our life oh God hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord every day about us oh Lord it is written in your book oh God before one of them come to be oh Lord before one of them come to be oh God it is everything you know about it oh God you know about it oh God hallelujah thank you Lord you are the God who order in our steps every day you are ordaining our steps to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are not fallen because of your grace, O God. We are standing firm on the rock, all because of your grace, O God. By your grace, we are not consumed. By your grace, O God, we are living. By your grace, O God, we are breathing. By your grace, O God, we are moving, O God. In you, O God, in Christ, we live, we move, and we have our being, O God. Thank you, Lord, for choosing in Christ, O Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. We want to thank you. We want to praise your name. Lord, touch our lips, oh God. Open our lips, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we, Lord, we want to declare your praises this evening. We want to declare your praises this evening. How awesome you are. How glorious you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We seek your faith this evening, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need your presence, oh God. We need your presence.
hands. Without your presence, we are nothing, O oh God. What else will distinguish us, O oh Lord, from the people on the face of the earth? Only your presence alone. Only your presence alone. We want to see your presence. We want to be drenched by your presence. We want to be clothed by your presence. We want to be, Lord, surrounded by your presence, O oh God. That alone, O oh God, is our portion. That alone is our treasure. That is the only thing, O oh God. O oh Lord, we determine to, Lord, run after and seek after. We choose, Lord, to seek your presence this evening. We determine, O oh Lord, to seek after, run after your presence this evening. We need you, Lord. Unite our hearts. Unite our minds. As a body of Christ, as a corporate body of Christ, we seek your face. Where we are, O oh God, you choose to be in that place, O oh God. For we are your habitation. For we are your temple. For we are your sanctuary. Lord, for you, we are your dwelling place. We need you this evening, Holy Spirit of God. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we open our lives. We open our minds. We open our hearts. We, Lord, hallelujah. We surrender everything unto you, Lord. We surrender everything unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We lay our lives before you, Lord. We are nothing, oh God. It's all because of you. It's all your grace. It's all your grace. Lord, we must decrease and you increase in us, oh God. More of Christ, oh Lord. More of Christ's power. More of Christ's love, oh God. More of Christ, oh God. Increase in us, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, this evening we welcome your presence. We welcome you in our midst, oh God. Lord, come and have your way, oh God. Be enthroned. Be enthroned in our midst, oh God. Lord, may your kingship, may your lordship, may your rulership, oh God. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Be enthroned this evening, oh God. Lord, we surrender. We give our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Lord, for teaching, uh, teaching, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation, oh God. Lord, you have not given up on our lives, oh God. You are still walking in us, oh God. You are walking, walking deeply in us, oh God. Lord, to conform to the image of Christ every day. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you. Every day you are taking, oh God, into another realm, oh God, to conform to the image of Christ, oh Father. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. Lord, may your word, oh God, hallelujah, come this this evening. Lord, pour out your fresh manna this evening. Lord, fill everyone with the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand your word. Give us an understanding heart to every one of God. We want to know you better. Enlighten the eyes of our heart to know the hope to which you have called us, O oh God. The glorious inheritance in your saints and the Lord, the great power, the resurrection power for those who believe. And this evening we believe, O oh God. Let everyone receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, O oh God. The hope, O oh God. The resurrection power of oh God. Lord, do something new this evening. Yesterday is gone, oh God. We are, we have a new day, oh God. Graciously, you have given us. Help us to maximize this time and the day for your kingdom and for you alone, oh God. Do something new, oh God. Help us, Lord, humbly, Lord, take the word, oh God, in our hearts. Your word, oh God, hallelujah, save us. And take us to another, Lord, realm, oh Lord. Take us to the destiny, oh Father. Lord, do something new, oh Father. May your word of God challenge us this evening. May your word of God shake our foundation this evening. May your word of God transform us this evening. Renew our minds this evening. Lord, take us to the Lord. Hallelujah. To towards the destiny that you have predestined for us, oh God. Lord, do something new. We, live, we lay our lives, oh God. We give our lives, oh God. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, take complete control of this time. Right from the beginning to the end, you take take complete charge of everything oh God hallelujah Lord cover this crowd cover this congregation by your precious blood oh God by your mighty blood oh God the enemy cannot touch anybody's hearts mind or a body oh father Lord hallelujah thank you Lord we give you all the glory we give you all the honor oh God you deserve everything oh father Lord we exist to worship you Lord Lord hallelujah we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen give a clap offering unto the Lord and welcome his present the sea you're the living water never dying fountain comforter counselor in complete Your 
to accomplish your intended purposes for our lives this evening. Unto this we give you glory, honor, the power, the praise. The rightfully belongs to you now and for all eternity. The most precious and powerful, never failing, name of Yeshua, we pray. God's people said, Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Can we have some upgrades? Some upgrades. Come on, come on. You, you can be there. Some of the people at the back, can, can you come? Because the rest, everybody has to move. So come, come, come. Three chairs are here. Two are here. Come, come. Shall we put our hands for Pastor Ma? Come, come. Leader should be in the front. Come on. Everybody. You can sit here there. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So what did I teach you last time? Hmm? Planning. Ten things about planning. Right. Can we quickly read out only the main points? All the ten points? Come on. What's the ten uh, points? Understanding the time and season. Number one. Number two. Plan before you act. Number three. Know your priorities before you plan. Number four. Hmm? Seek or take advice before you plan. Yes. Act ahead of time. Number five. Six, count the cost. Seven. Pay attention to details when you plan. Eight. Know your resources. Number eight. Number nine. Plan on what, what to spend and what to save. Ten. Your plans must match the purpose of God. That's the ultimate thing. Men, if you don't realize God's purpose in your life, no matter how good you plan, it doesn't pay off. Right? So the plan is to execute and to fulfill God-given purpose in your life. Because, you know, most of when I say that, you know, we are purpose-driven. We are not just driven by programs or, or just with the mentality of being successful, but rather we are driven by purpose. So you need to always realize, uh, always motivate yourself, why in the world am I existing? Why in the world am I existing? What is the reason, the purpose behind my life? So that's the most important thing. Men? Amen. And now today I just want to talk to you. You ready? When I say talk, but I do expect you to talk back. Is that all right? Okay, good. Good enough. And uh, some of the things now I would like to say that we need to improve as leaders to be efficient in who we are and what we do. So now I put that as two categories. Being efficient in who we are and then what we do. You can never disconnect your actions from your character. There is something that happens on the inside and also there is something that we do on the outside. So what is done on the outside could be seen and testified by people. But what does happen on the inside, only you know and God knows. When you think about our God, the Bible says he is working in us both to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. The Lord is more interested in doing things on the inside. So developing your character, that is who you are, is very important and it must be the force behind the manifestation of your thoughts and actions. Now 
the small like a foundation your character is small like a foundation and everything else you do you know you go to work and you do your business you do your ministry and all that you do on the outside you are building it upon your character which is going to be your foundation so never ever try to deceive yourself you have to closely monitor the developments on the inside god is working in us in us if you look at the way how god functions it's so beautiful he always starts things from the inside to the outside amen and uh, who is the source of life the holy spirit amen the flesh counts for nothing it is the spirit that gives life and he said i put the holy spirit on the inside of you out of your belly shall flow the multiple rivers of the holy spirit always remember being a man of god a woman of god a lead in the kingdom of god he bring things from the inside to the outside either you have it or you don't you know acting doesn't help you for a long time <laughs> only to expose and betray yourself and to be put to shame <laughs> you know there's so much of risk and lot of effort you have to put in keep on acting out to be somebody when you know you're not right but when you have a character you can be just spontaneous and natural right you're not humble you try to act like being humble <laughs> you understand what i say you do not know but you still act and i keep on speaking as though there is some substance in you people get fed up at listening to you for 15 minutes so you need to know like how to be resourceful on the inside right am i talking to you yes. look at the way how god has created everything if you take a little egg there's a life that spawns on the inside you know as it grows it begins to fight and break the shell and come out right so you talk about any seed any plant any flower in all these things you find one thing that god brings to work from the inside and then brings it to the outside amen so now being a leader you need to always focus on who you are and you need to constantly work on it it could, we can never say it is something that does happen to you no one fine morning out of the blues you can never say no i happen to be a great man of god no <laughs> you can talk like one act like one no you can never say no i'm going to be a great woman of god one day no maybe till you go to the grave it doesn't happen <laughs> if you do not know no one year from now where you want to be then you don't have a vision probably what i would like to say is you are daydreaming you are not very practical about the things of god in your life and our god is concerned about your everyday life that's why he gives grace every single day amen he has given you assignment every day is important so you need to know how to live one day at a time and living it so protectively right so now who you are and then what you do these are interconnected it should be that way any kind of gap between these two will create hypocrisy you know where does hypocrisy come you're trying to know show things that you don't have you can never give away something what you don't have the greatest wealth in the kingdom of god is not what you do it is who you are you are the showcase on what to say you are the trophy for god to boast of <laughs> for god to boast about you look at my product hallelujah 
because he is working in us somehow to make things perfect and his work will go on on and on on and on till you breathe your last breath what he will say yes this is the last touch then he will take you into glory amen amen if you work on who you are on the inside i want to tell you you won't compete with anybody else now you covered what somebody else has be it title or position <laughs> it doesn't bother you because the bible says you are running the race open your mouth and say the race amen you should not be a xerox of somebody else God has made you to be an original person. Amen. Amen. Everything about you is so original. There's nothing to duplicate. So first tell you, son, I don't have to be like somebody. All right? I told you. No, I don't believe in competing, but I believe in competence. You have to be competent as a child of God, as a minister of God. Amen? It doesn't mean you have to compete with others. So now, okay, what I wanted to speak to you this evening is about one of the things that usually you find the entire nation is under its yoke. Unlike, you know, what you see in the West, the one thing that I'm going to talk to you about is something is so prevalent, something that can paralyze any kind of vision or organization or church or whatever it is the one thing you know what it said not being punctual so i'm going to talk to you about punctuality and people who travel to the west <laughs> some of you could have lived there maybe on business or for sake of a company you travel but when you come to india you see people being late that you don't see many of the places probably I would like to say you know people being late to the church so i'm not going to talk to you about how the common person should be but i'm talking to you as leaders one of the things we find in our nation now people i don't know not right from the time i grew up i see a christian world where um being a pastor for the last 28 years but much before that even as i grew up as a little boy as a teenager as a youth i found in most of the places this has been a problem it's more like a chronic disease of being late so now okay i'm not talking about any one of you you're all very good you know all of you 100% punctual if you're not it breaks your conscience <laughs> i leave it at that right but think about this When you think about our God and the Bible and you see how God does everything beautiful in his time. Amen. Amen. Our God cannot function outside time. Though he is living outside of time, the Bible says he is somebody who functions in relationship with time. That's why when you read the Bible, when the Bible says when the time was fulfilled, God did this. Amen. All the prophecy you talk about it all has to do with timing right so for you to understand very well i want you to turn your bible with me to ecclesiastes chapter 3 maybe all of us will read that there the bible talks about the timing <laughs> concerning a lot of things
maybe you know first 17 verses shall we read are you there come on open your mouth and read with me lovely let's confess there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build a time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance and a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to search and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to mend a time to be silent and a time to speak and a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace what do workers gain from their toil i have seen the burden god has laid on the human race he has made everything beautiful in its time he has also said eternity in the human heart it no one can fathom what god has done from beginning to end i know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil this is the gift of god i know that everything god does will endure forever nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it god does it so that people will fear him whatever is has already been and what will be has been before and god will call the past to account and i saw something else under the sun in the place of judgment wickedness was there in the place of justice wickedness was there i said to myself god will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked for there will be a time for every activity a time to judge every deed amen so i read the whole thing to you basically just to let you know that the bible itself talks about there is a time for every activity under the sun amen so now timing is very important even if you take your car your bike and all the mechanical instruments they always function with a time you understand what i'm saying everything has to work according to the time otherwise it's going to mal function so god has created you and me and in fact the bible says uh, you know god has put eternity in our hearts amen so and he makes everything so beautiful in his time so why in the world you and i we need to be motivated to do things on time it's mainly because uh, god has put eternity in our hearts and how many of you realize you know you have very limited number of days to live here on earth you're not going to be living here forever amen so some of us i do not know how many years we are going to live but maybe you lived for 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years uh, 60 years we do not know and you do not know your date of death but now while god put you here you know he does everything beautiful in his time and also he has put eternity in our hearts so that keeping the eternity in our mind will be able to make use of the few number of days in order to be productive and to finish the assignment that God has given to you. Amen. Amen. Always remember, though we live in this world, say about for you know, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, uh, I don't know, it does vary from person to person. But you need to understand, God is in the business of preparing you for eternity. Amen. Amen. So you, God is always on the move. You believe that? 
Yes or no? God is not, you know, lazy. You know, the first thing you read in the Bible, Genesis 1, in the beginning was God. And then the Bible goes on saying, the spirit of God was uh, moving upon the waters. I want to thank God. <laughs> Nothing else was created, but the spirit of God was <laughs> busy, you know, moving. You know, he was hovering upon the waters. Amen. So now, our God is always on the move. Amen. You can't, you know, you need to keep in step with God. There's a verse in Bible, Galatians 5 thing. It says, keep in step with the spirit. Hallelujah. Remember, now as far as your destiny is concerned, it is you and God working together. Amen. If God's going to move, you're going to move. If God's going to speak, you're going to speak. Now, every day counts in your life. You can't do you know, what you want to do you know, in your own time. No. Every day, every week, every month, every year does count. So always remember, you need to live your life here on earth, you know, understanding the eternity and the purpose of eternity in your heart. That's why God has set the eternity in your heart. So that every day you will think about it. Every day you will remind yourself about it. I'm not created to be here. I am designed for God. I'm created for God. I don't belong here. I have a date of birth. <laughs> time to be born. <laughs> you know, that time to die. You know, I pity the people you know, who just live for the sake of uh, having a flamboyant life only here on earth. <laughs> By the time they retire, they build their mansions, bought gold, silver, and whatever you name it, but they're gone. So sad. You follow what I'm talking about? Thank God for those people who had the kingdom focus. Every day, every month, every year, they live only for God. When you die, you have gained so much, and you have no regret of leaving behind anything. We have got absolutely nothing to lose. But much to gain eternity every single day. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Fix your eyes on things above and not on things below. Amen. Where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. So now, coming back to the point. So what I was trying to say. Being punctual. No wonder, no, Moses, you know, pray to God. Lord, teach us to number our days right. He didn't pray like, you know, Lord, teach me how many years I'll live. <laughs> He's talking about numbering every single day. Amen. The Bible also says he has numbered your hairs. So when, all the, and when one of the falls, he exactly knew which one of the hairs, which number of the hair <laughs> fell down. You understand what I'm saying? So our God is a God who does everything in connection with the time. Amen. Even Jesus was conscious of time. You remember? And now Mary was telling, you know, there's no wine. He said, hold on. <laughs> My time has nodded. Come. So now, I want to speak to your heart uh, saying that, there's something that's totally intertwined and uh, being part of a system. You need to break yourself out of this bondage of being late. You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, now people around us and uh, everywhere you see, this is something that bothers, especially the Indian community. Right? So as a leader, you need to be efficient in doing things on time. The best thing would be like, uh, you need to be much before time. Amen? Anywhere, anywhere you go, have a principle. Now, I learned this from my dad. You know, right from the time when I was a little boy, you know, I do remember, he would never be late to anywhere. He'll be always there, maybe in half an hour or 40 minutes earlier. You know, it was good enough you know, for me to pick it up from him right from childhood. So now, do understand, if you're a leader, you cannot 
afford this and are being laid everywhere some time now being laid has become a habit i'm talking about those guys you know who are chronic late comers and anywhere you go you are late and now people tell you you know your leaders tell you your pastor tells you your pastor your boss tells you but simply you are late there's something wrong with the way we perceive things at the same time you look at some other people they are always ahead of time amen so you see people of two different kinds and those who know who are habitually late i'm not ta- talking about people who are late once in a while i'm talking about people being habitually late now coming to office or church wherever you go you now habitually if you are late there is seriously seriously something wrong with your system even after being told you can't correct yourself even after being warned you, you can't take the correction then you need to realize there's something basically wrong the way you conduct yourself or even operate yourself even the way you think about you know how you are perceived about what god has given to you amen so now how many of you know now even the little birds in the sky i think it's uh, jeremiah 7 the migration of the time I want somebody to read that i think it's jeremiah sound right read pastor yeah jeremiah it's even the stork in the sky knows their appointed seasons and the dove the swift and the thrush observe the time of their migration but my people do not know the requirements of the lord how can he say we are wise for we ha- so there i don't know it talks about four different kinds of birds hmm what's the first one hmm stork is quite a big bird right stork yeah then dow then swift thrush thrush is the smallest one right chitagri like right so now uh, the one thing that the lord is trying to teach is people saying that even the stock in the sky knows a pointed season now hold on you know i sometime back i was reading something about these birds i don't remember everything exactly what i read but one thing i do know is and all these birds observe the time of migration amen that means that they had to get ready you know some of the birds uh, even the storks they have to fly from one continent to an other continent so sometimes i think now okay, a stork is a very biggest bird so it does no even the thrush even the smallest of the small bird it does observe the time of their migration now think about how god has created everything what about ant you know it's a smallest creature the wise man says you know you go to the ant and learn wisdom it gets ready for the winter in summer it does act ahead of time amen so one of the things you know why a lot of things are delayed in our lives you know what i would like to say some people are bound with the spirit of delay this delay will bring limitations in your life this delay will br- you know spoil your character it will spoil your reputation you're not going to be perceived as a leader anywhere any guy anywhere shows up late i want to tell you that doesn't talk good about that person you understand what i'm saying it only shows your attitude so what why i'm saying that you know if you want to develop yourself as a leader the first thing you need to learn is to be able to act according to the time say amen. amen i know you're not very comfortable i don't care <laughs> you have to listen you better learn amen so now the all the four birds the bible talks about you to observe their time of migration now i want you to go back maybe google it and find out how these birds put in a lot of effort from moving from one place to another place sometimes they fly even for a couple of months 
to go to another continent to another nation to another beach where they can go and lay eggs and produce the offspring it's amazing it's mind boggling the kind of wisdom that god has built within this birds are amazing and uh, now me and my wife we're talking about it i don't know where uh, it's in job 34 33 uh, somewhere now god talks about he teaches wisdom to us more than the beasts of the field god teaches wisdom my beautiful wife can you find that hmm? god teaches wisdom to the beasts of the field more than us got it okay now okay anyway i will give you later look at me look at me god teaches wisdom to us more than the beasts of the field no that tells me god does even teach wisdom to the beasts but the point here is he does teach him more than how he teaches the beasts of the field so it never was saying no beasts in the field they don't have wisdom right and then the bible goes on saying he has made us wise than the birds of the air more wise he has made us more wise than the birds of the air so that means birds are wise but he has given you and me a greater wisdom than the birds of the air amen so now all the beasts of the field you know if you look at all the birds if they can function according to the time the divine supernatural clock biological clock that is inbuilt on them nobody tells them what to do job 35 and uh, 3511 everybody turn come on 3511 are you there here we go who teaches more to us than to the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the air wow say wow hello observing the time of your migration look at me my dear friends i want to tell you look at me look at me look at me i'm talking about an attitude of being late it's an attitude there's something something basically wrong with your system wrong with your mind it's more like a chronic disease you drag yourself anywhere but i want to tell you why i'm telling you now we are preparing a group of uh, leaders who will be uh, able to display an outstanding lifestyle before the rest of the congregation as leaders amen amen have you ever thought like you know people go to the office on time they go to the, uh, the train station on time and you don't go to the airport uh, late you don't send your children to sunday school sorry not sunday school <laughs> to school on time but how in the world who told us uh, that we could come to the house of god late we can do the ministry late and so many other things late who told us did you ever think like that how can we expect god to bless us why am i saying that now i'm looking forward you to break away from the bondage that the kind of an you know, attitude that keeps you bound that doesn't allow you to function on time have you heard the word you know people use in the corporate world being proactive amen i always say your tomorrow starts today hello your sunday starts on saturday no amen only ravi it's good on your emanation your sunday starts when you know being laid and you know, being is a, is a sign of being lazy that's what the bible talks about now seek the lord early in the morning why if you seek him early in the morning you will find him we can pray whenever you want to pray you know you can pray in the afternoon you can pray in the evening or even uh, you know in the night but god says you know if you seek me early in the morning you ask yourself one question why in the world i go late i'm not saying you know you came late today no no that's not someone for you if you are a habitual late comer and it has been i know identified it has been advised to you i know why i want you to wake up and come out of the bondage because we see that in our society we see the roots going deeper in our community you know as a nation we are 
Like, come on, you understand what I'm saying? So even the little bell, bird like thrush, the, it's recorded in the Bible. The Lord says, hey, even the little, little bird. When I was a little boy, I remember, you know, I used to, what do you call, catapult. You know, I regret now. <laughs> I love all these small birds. It has beautiful colors. I'll just uh, kill the only to see the colors. My wife would scold <laughs> when I say that. But it's a very tiny little bird. Have you seen that? Huh? Tiny. It's, the Bible says uh, it can observe the time of migration. God says, hey, what happens to you? I have given you wisdom more than the birds. If the birds could function like that, how much more I do expect from you? You know, now wisdom is not in just showing up. Always remember. Who you are as a person is being perceived by a lot of people apart from you. You have a talent, you have a skill, you have a lot of other things to show up. It doesn't matter. You know, who you are is being perceived by every other person. And I, every, I like to tell you, being punctual, it has to do with your disciplined life. Open your mouth and say, discipline. If you are ahead of the family, I want to tell you, if you are a mama, make sure you do that so that you give a solid, uh, good foundation for your children. If they pick it up very early in time, it's going to be useful for them. Yes or no? Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes in the morning, morning for 5 30 means I try to be here by 4 30 or 4 45. That has become a lie. <laughs> you understand? Those issues are already settled. In our, it should be settled in our mind. So now, let me go back to a few more verses. Right. And now, Ecclesiastes 5, 8, verse 5 and 6. Quickly. Ecclesiastes 8, 5 and 6. Whoever, come on, read with me. Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm and the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Amen? So now here it talks about, you see the connection between obedience and the wise heart. Now look at me. Look at me. It's amazing. Here you see an amazing combination of a wise heart and also the obedience. Now, what makes you wise? It's not the knowing part. It's the doing part. You follow what I'm talking about? Because you know the entire Bible doesn't make you wise. You are wise because the Bible says because you do what you know. Until you do what you know, you're not wise. Amen? So wise has nothing to do with knowing. The wise has to do with the doing of what you know all about. Amen? The wise man is somebody who could listen to the word and put the word into practice. Amen? So until there is obedience in your life, you're not going to be wise. So now, wise people are those who have an inclination for obedience. Amen? There are people now who want to be forced <laughs> to do things. It's a kind of life of servitude. Only slaves are handled that way. You understand what I'm saying? Hello? Yes. Sons and daughters, they don't need that. Slaves, you know, you have to force them to do. You, know, you have to make them obligated to do. That's the life of a slave. But sons and daughters in the kingdom, what do we do? We have a heart for obedience. We obey because we want to obey. We want to do things because we like doing things. Amen? Hallelujah. Anytime you try to do something you don't enjoy, I want to tell you, there is, you lack a revelation. Anytime in the kingdom of God, you are doing things out of obligation. Oh, I have to be punctual. Oh, otherwise my boss will scold me. Otherwise my pastor will scold me. There's, there's a discord. There's an internal conflict. Right? You're trying to deliver something what you are not capable of hello yes or no so now what is the words we read 
Okay. Now, obedience. Okay. If you obey, you will come to no harm. Then, the wise heart. Not everybody. Hello. Listen. Not everyone. Open your mouth and shout and say with me, the wise heart. The wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. In other words, what I'm trying to say is when you do not know, it's not what I'm trying to say, it's what the Bible says is when you are not punctual and you don't do things on time and you don't act on time, you don't have a wise heart. Wisdom is not just about doing things, it's doing things on time. Yes or no? Hmm? That's the only way you can maneuver your life wisely. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of collision, <laughs> damage, and accidents. Acting on time. Here the Bible says the wise art. So ask yourself, do am I wise? I want to tell you, sometimes people are bound to the spirit of delay. It comes on you very early of the day. Think about it. Think about what I'm trying to say. It comes over you right on the very early of the day. And it slows down a lot of things in your life, little by little. Right from your thinking, your doing, a lot of things. You are much behind schedule, not only physically, even spiritually. If you find people who say like, no, I don't have time for reading Bible, I don't have time for praying. <laughs> no, what does it mean? You are not efficient in managing your time. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody told me, you know, many years back, now I still remember, the spirit that rules the early hour rules the rest of the day. You decide, you set the course in motion right at the early hours of the day, how the rest of the day is going to be. That's what the Bible says, keep in step with the spirit. That's what the Bible says, seek the Lord early in the morning. If you're a late person, if you're habitually late, I want to tell you, you're not a good team player. <laughs> you're going to be a discouragement to a lot of people. They won't spell it out. They'll ki kindly come and say, ah, okay, try to be on time, okay? They are a little polite to you. They are trying to say you are a discouragement. <laughs> Alright? So as leaders, you need to inculcate and develop this habit of being punctual in whatever you do. So now, read the following verse. They ignore his proper time and say time, time. and also say procedure. procedure. Now these two things are interconnected. Every procedure has to do with the time. If you're a little late, that is over. Now for example, I'm telling you, now all the ushers must be here on time. Why? So that you can come and pray. So now... <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the procedure. You have to come together. You know, you pray together before you serve the Lord and the people, right? But when you're late, what's going to happen? Prayer is over. <laughs> and you still make a mad, you know, rush into the church. Already have they prayed. You missed the procedure. You understand what I'm saying? Don't look at me like this, or no. It's, you need to understand it's not, not the question of how good you can do certain things is the question now why you do those things. That's very, very important. You can't just say, no, I'm, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. Come on, there are a lot of people who are much better than me and you know, yourself out in the world. But here, what makes us people with distinction? It's because of the revelation you carry that teaches you every single day. Hey, buddy, now what do you do? Be it unto God, be it unto people. This is the reason why you do what you do. Say amen. amen. We have a strong motivation. Our purpose is well defined, very clearly defined. Amen. And nothing like, you know, you do things on an obligation. You function like a son, you function like a daughter. You want things. When you go to office, you want things. You don't just no, work for the salary. You say, this is my company. Right? 
this is my boss and he has to be blessed hello this is my ministry you need to have the sense of ownership and be able to deliver much more than what is expected of you hello be able to deliver much more than what is expected of you so now why now, now you'll be able to understand why some people are not leaders sometimes they can now be leaders it is mainly simply for this reason a leader cannot be one unless until he is punctual everything else is gone he could be good in this he could be good in that he can be so eloquent he's so experienced it doesn't matter it doesn't pay off you you cannot bring yourself to be punctual you are not a leader you got to be there first amen I'm so happy, you know, when people come rushing much ahead of time. I, my heart rejoices. There's a sweat in their feet. There's a joy. They come amazing. They occupy their place, their sanctuary. Maybe even your business, whatever it is. Punctuality is the expression of your attitude towards God towards your organization and towards the church so now two things i said time and say time and procedure how quiet you are all only today i'll beat you okay afterwards i'll all quantify today is samadhi it's like a slap on your face i'm your spiritual dad i can do that amen. i can say things right on your face yes. amen. amen so now two things read read the verse again proper time and procedure now now when you don't keep up the time what's going to happen your procedure will be affected you know you talk to doctors you know any surgeon before they could do the operation what's going to happen they there's a lot of procedure right before the surgeon could come and you see the nurses and everyone what madam huh what do you do one hour before How many hours before? One day. Well, it starts much ahead. One day before, right? The lot of things that could be done before the surgeon could, could, could come and put his blade. You understand what I'm saying? So now, you know, when you do not know how to be punctual, you know, when you have this in a continuous, uh, you know, what a chronic habit of making it late, you will affect a lot of procedure you know, on your way. it could happen in your workplace uh, it could happen in the church it could happen in many other places you understand what i'm talking about procedure is very important so now when you talk about the procedure you need to know it as a beginning and the end correct right from the time it starts maybe one day before you know there are people who start doing a lot of things analyzing this and that uh, and then after the surgery is over they need to do a lot of things and then finish it it is a beginning and a end so you need to understand this sometime you now the spirit of delay remember now understand you can move from one company to another company move from one church to another church move from one situation to another situation but this thing will be there with you forever till you go to the grave unless until you know how to break free from this you understand what i'm saying So now the Bible talks about the time and the procedure. The wise heart. Punctuality has to do with wisdom. I'm not talking about now people coming late and once in a while. I'm talking about chronic latecomers anytime. Sometimes it could cause a paralysis mentally and also 
socially which will not allow people to come together for a common cause you understand what i'm saying amen so now and one of the beautiful image and i could think about was what he said the son can do nothing by himself he can do only what he sees the father doing amen if you look at the father son and the holy spirit they all work in complete union and perfect timing hallelujah praise god he said i cannot do anything on my own if i see my father saying something immediately i have to do it so he waits for the timing of the father he says uh, you know unless the father does the son cannot do whatever i see the father doing the son will also do the same amen and uh, read verse number 6 ecclesiastes 6 yeah there's a proper time and procedure for every matter come on come on look at me as a, now i want to tell you as a pastor you're going to put me off <laughs> i'm not talking about people coming late once in a while no i perfectly understand but only i'm talking about now people who are habitually late not only to the ministry even to the church your sunday must start when saturday develop a culture develop a mindset develop a teaching develop a theory in a house a family you want to get ready to be there to serve the lord the bible says for me and my house we will serve the lord it is they will just go to church and worship and come back no we will serve the lord now why now i wanted to take this topic today you see that this is something that bothers not only christians and anyway you go no any kind of function you go you see now in those days you know i used to be very punctual tell people you know i'll be there i go there nobody is there but i change my punctuality now <laughs> i said no this is the time i'm going to be there i'm telling you right so i go right on time so that we don't have to waste we do that because the people come very late why i'm saying that i'm talking to leaders if you're a leader you have to be won by example so the bible says there is a proper time and procedure for every activity under the sun say amen, amen. hallelujah now how many of you know whether you realize or not to being punctual it has to do with with a sense of responsibility if you are a habitual late come i want to tell you you don't have the right kind of motivation why in the world you should be punctual and i want to tell you you to go and talk to anybody who is punctual they will tell you they go there much early much before time they are ready to deliver much more than what is expected of them because they have an awesome sense of responsibility hello this is a clear indication one of the syndromes i would say you know how to find responsible people responsible people they are much ahead of time before even if it is required they will be the first one to come and they will be the last one to leave because you know the bible talks about god entrusting everything in our hands amen so the reason why you need to motivate is so why i have to be punctual it is mainly because you are responsible amen whether you do big things or greater things uh, it's all different but being punctual as a leader commands respect and if you're a leader and you don't do it i want to tell you you are a very bad example if you're a father you don't do it it's a very bad example if you're a mom you don't do it your children know most of the things they, they it is caught then taught your children don't do what you teach them your children do exactly what you do <laughs> a lot of beautiful qualities can be 
infused in our children's life very early in life all that it takes very simple and our dad and mom they have to just do it and do a lifestyle and strong teaching and the motivation and revelation behind everything they do sometimes I see you know no i'm not talking about now but i'm talking about generally you know i'm touching 50 listen of a century the people older than me but the point here is i see you know every church people come late our church is far better i pray and always i pray that you know uh, late comers will not find any place <laughs> <laughs> the church will grow beat anybody musician or anybody you have to stay out the door is locked up I remember another old sanctuary, another it was small. Most of the people would sit outside. Now when you have New Year, right? The little cry thing we used to put around 240 chairs, 250 chairs. Uh, uh, how many chairs, son? 242 something. For these 242 chairs, my goodness. I thought no, once and I came to the New Year service at 9 o'clock. Me and my wife thought we come 9 o'clock. And 10:30 uh, is a service. Usually we come, okay, one and a half hours. Uh, I'm earlier. I'm coming, church is full. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> It'll happen. Amen. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Remember, no, you need to shake up yourself. Come on, church. Amen? amen. Nobody should tell you, come on, time. Maybe, you know, they tell you once or twice. If you keep doing that, there's something wrong. There's something that has become part of your nature. There's something that's fighting too hard. It doesn't want to leave you. So now it talks about, uh, you know, people come and be punctual. They have a sense of responsibility. If you don't have a sense of responsibility, then you can never be punctual. Otherwise, you just want to be part of the crowd. You want to be part of the gang. Yes, somebody will come, somebody will do. I'll go and just show off. And then run out. You're not connecting a 100 meters dash. <laughs> you run in and you run out. No. You come early and then you leave late. Thank God. Now, all the people who do that, we never teach them. They do it on their own. That's why you need to have this sense of responsibility. Amen? Okay. Are you enjoying? Yeah, sometimes this is nice. Really nice. Say it's nice. Do like this. It's nice. <laughs> Say it like that. Sometimes it's nice. God will bless you. God will lift you up. You're going to have another house. We'll say it all some other time. It's not now. Not today, my wife said. So now, I told you, you know, being punctual has to do with your sense of responsibility. Now, it's very difficult to trust somebody who will not be punctual. You cannot make him an in charge. Think about that. Even if you are the boss. You want to leave behind a certain things with somebody else. That person must be there much before anybody. Amen? People who are driven by a sense of responsibility. They are the ones who are trying to be there before anybody could come. Because they feel they are responsible. Amen? So now, sometimes God would like to entrust a lot of things to us. Always remember, you are being perceived. Sometimes I've seen people who are so gifted, so talented, but they are not materials for leadership. It's mainly because of these characteristics. But you, at the same time, look at other people who are average in many things, but they show a high level of you know, attitude and also punctuality and being available and you know, displaying a sense of responsibility and being able to deliver more than what is required of them. They are leaders. 
You follow what I'm saying? Amen. Our Jesus is one. Hallelujah. God sent him from heaven to the earth. But what happened? He lived for 33 and a half years. 30 years good life. 3 and a half years. My goodness. I want to tell you. you know. He even prayed to God saying, Lord, if it is not your will, take this cup away from me. Then he changed his prayer and said, no, 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 no. If it is your will, I will do it. It not my will, let your will be done. He surrendered. I want to tell you, but when he was crucified, after he, as he was about to give the spirit, the Bible says, he shouted, it is finished. A sense of responsibility. If you don't start on time, you will not finish on time. If you miss the procedure, I want to tell you, there's going to be something wrong. It will affect you. It does have consequences. No way no people can say, no, no matter how you start, you can always finish well. Who told you that? Try to start well. Hello? Do it every single day. And I, every, every time you get up, try to start the day well. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, do it well. I want to tell you, when you go to bed, amazing. You'll be so protective during the course of the day. Amen? So now, let me give you a few more verses if I have. Okay, now Luke 16.10. Read that. Luke 16.10. Quickly. Yes? You're taking it? Here we go. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonored with much. Now listen. Am I honest with the timing? Now how do you perceive God? No, listen, listen. If you have the habit of just running and coming and joining in between. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about somebody. You are all like angels. Look at your face. You follow what I'm saying? Hello? Come on. So okay? You're okay? Even if you don't like it, I'll... You know, you have to be there to start the process or the procedure and also you should be there to complete the procedure. Amen? When you think about God, what a beautiful image of Jesus Christ. He says that the one who has begun a good work in you. No, amen? amen. Huh? He is also able to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. Now God is somebody who begins it and also you will see it through and he'll be there at the finishing point to finish it beautifully. Amen. You need to have this kind of quality in you. I'm talking to you as a leader. Not as somebody who just end up doing something in the kingdom of God. You understand what I'm saying? Even in the company, you know, everywhere you go, people develop what do you call a question about who you are. Your CEO, your boss, there are 100 people, 1,000 people working in the office, but who you are, without using words, they keep perceiving. I want to tell you, if you learn to display all these things, and the beautiful things of being, having a good attitude, and respecting people, and always you know, and having a good spirit, to interact and talk with people and being the punctual, being able to deliver more than what is given to you, I want to tell you, it makes a lot of difference. Why in the world, Joseph, Joseph was somebody, you know, whatever he went, you know, he was liked by everyone. Why? He wanted to give more than what is required of him. Amen? He didn't say, no, I'm just a slave. Let me do the work of a slave. If I'm told to do what I, what I should be doing, then I will do it. If nobody's going to tell me anything, a boss is not around, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it. He never had the kind of attitude. You follow what I'm talking about? Am I talking a little fast? Yes, You're okay? Yes, okay. Hello, hello, show me a hand. You're okay? Yes, but what did he do? 
he did more than what is expected of him he was promoted in 40 verse hours you know he went as a prisoner in the prison he was promoted always remember you showcase yourself as to who you are by your attitude by your actions by your words by your punctuality amen so now talking about jesus he is the author and the finisher of your faith he is the alpha hello omega he is the beginning and the end he is the first and the last he is the one who was the one who is and the one who is to come a leader i want to tell you he sees everything completely in a package right from the beginning until the end nothing goes missing in terms of details others will come and go but the leader has a sense of responsibility praise god be a, that kind of leader amen so now uh read it once again the verse uh, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much you know you can talk to any leader you can be a leader yourself people who cannot be functioning with punctuality it's difficult to put them as number one leader or first line leaders they don't deserve you can be so smart you can do all kinds of tamasas and you know <laughs> intellectual gymnasium all these things where doesn't pay off if somebody is going to enter something to you they want you to be there punctual from the beginning till the end so that they know you are responsible and you can be trusted amen and jesus said that you are in my hands and nobody can ever snatch you from me or my father sand amen so the little things in your life matter the most are you with me okay i want you to read some words as you know we're prostin five prostin five quickly quickly we're running out of time Are you there? He who gathers crops in summer is a wise or prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. It's talking about not doing something by having the awareness about the time. Even the men of Issachar, you remember the first thing I spoke to you about. The men of Issachar, they understood the time. Open your mouth and say, understood the time. i want to tell you you know some of you if you really understand what i'm talking about you will distinguish yourself you will exceptionally conduct yourself to be a very growing leader wherever you go amen so here the bible talks about a son what does he do during the summer he gathers crops he must there is a prudent son but the one who sleeps during harvest no listen sleeps during harvest it is talking about the activity no so it has to do with the timing now listen you need to always ask god lord what i should do when it's time for me to do something am i sleeping i'm not talking about literally sleeping but it could be about postponing things and not being even aware about what i should be doing now right now okay there's a word so i don't know where it is 64 maybe sluggers do not plow in season at all was time they look but find nothing it is there i don't know where it is 69 okay there's a word that talks about the sluggers do not plow in plow in plow in season so at our time 
they look but find nothing okay 2615 proms 2615 quickly hmm A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. Now listen. You know, it is an amazing revelation. You know, what does it mean? Huh? What does it mean? We are talking about sluggard. Right? What does he do? He puts his hand in the dish. <laughs> he doesn't want to bring it back into his mouth. When you were a little while ago, it was okay. Mom was you know, feeding you. You didn't want to even eat. Mom did everything. You just had to swallow everything. But here, the, the Bible is not talking about it. The Bible is talking about something else. It says, you put your hands to the dish and you don't want to bring it to your mouth. You know, what, what does it talk about? It talks about you begin something and you don't complete it because you're lazy. Now think about it. In a lot of times, you know, there are people who are good enough to start something. But they will never sustain, nor they will be able to see the harvest. You know why? Laziness. So we have to know, introspect ourselves. You need to really, you need to introspect yourself. You need to ask this question to yourself. Saying that, am I somebody who has no problem in starting things, but I don't complete. I quit halfway. Maybe, you know, in a month's time, maybe in a couple of years' time, I'm not motivated. I move to something else. Lazy people, people don't want to be punctual. I want to tell you, they cannot be consistent. The Bible says, you know, you put your hands on something, but you don't want to bring it to your mouth. You have started it, but you will not complete it. That's a spirit of delay. Spirit of laziness, right? Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, quickly. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Somebody say amen. amen. Now look at me. And I'm looking at your Bible. Now look at me. This is very important. Be very careful. Open your mouth and say, be very careful. Be very careful. The Bible advocates saying that you've got to be wise and not be unwise. So now, wise about what? It says, wise in making use of every opportunity. The lazy person will never even know or discern even the opportunity when it comes. You will not even know about it. Here the Bible says, if you have the wisdom, if you're wise, you will make use of most of every opportunity. And also the Bible says, because the days are evil. The days are evil. And also it says, verse 17, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So, being able to act according to the time, it has to do with also the Lord's will. That's what the Bible says, when the time was fulfilled, the Lord sent his son. When the time was fulfilled, the Lord did this. Amen. The Lord does everything beautiful only in his time. Amen. So now, no, no matter what you do and how good you do, how best you could do if it is not executed in accordance with the time, it is no use. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord makes everything beautiful in its time. Some versions say in his time. Think about this. Now, I want to tell you, this is not to make you feel guilty, but if you have a serious problem, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, if you are doing it habitually for many years, and you're struggling with it, 
and you're not able to rectify it you need to deal with the roots of those things every spirit of delay everything that's holding you back from giving your best to god must be uprooted amen and also i want you to read quickly another verse props 6 9 6 9 to 12 shall you all read how long Will you lie there, you slow God? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands uh, to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief uh, and scarcity like an armed man. A troublemaker and a woman who goes about with a corrupt mouth. Here also it talks about how, you know, laziness can cause unwarranted delays in your life. Okay, Proms 24, 30 to 34, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Read with me if you can. Read with me if you can. Are you there? Here we go, verse 30 to 34. I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Wow. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Wow. Now look at me. Here the wise man says he was passing by the field of a sluggard. How do you like it? field of a sluggard. Even the sluggard has a field. <laughs> no matter what you give to the sluggard, I want to tell you, you know, it's not going to be of any use. So, <laughs> the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone, someone, finish it, who has no sense, somebody who is nonsense. <laughs> That's what it says, somebody who has no sense. What happened? He had a field. But when you look at the field. Now listen, listen. Look at me. Look at me. I'm not the field, but just look at me. <laughs> when you look at the field, thorns had come up everywhere. Open your mouth and say, everywhere. everywhere. Wow. You, you don't look at your Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll read for you. The ground was covered with weeds. So now the wise man, as he was, you know, Passing by the side of the field of a sluggard, he pauses for a moment and takes a good look at the field of a sluggard. Now, it says two things, thorns and weeds. Thorns had come up everywhere and the weeds covered the ground completely. Now, when I was reading this, you know, the Spirit of God told me, the field of a sluggard, it is the manifestation or the, it is the, manifestation or the condition of the heart and the life of a sluggard you look at the field and you know what kind of person is this you understand what i'm saying hello there's a strong connection established between the sluggard and his field and the lord says, hey look at his field thorns had come up everywhere covered with weeds and this is the field of of a sluggard why you now the Lord allowed this to be named like that? The field of a sluggard. Because of thorns and weeds. And the stone wall was in ruins. Now, after seeing that, he says, I applied wisdom to my heart. And he says, I learned a lesson. Open your mouth and say, I learned a lesson. Now, I do not know what is your field. Now, look at me. Close all your Bible. It could be anything. What is your field? Your field is a place of activity. Your field is a place of assignment for you. Your field is something that is given to you by God. Your field should be an inheritance. Your field must be the place. It must be the most happening place. But the Lord says that your field is the expression and the manifestation and the condition of who you are. You can never separate your field from your life. And the field is named as the field 
of a sluggard. I don't know what is your feel. Think about it. I pray the Spirit of God will give you an awesome insight concerning your field. What is your field? It could be anything, you know, be it in the kingdom of God, be it in your office, be it in a company, you know, be it in a business, be it in the church, be it in the ministry assignments. What is your field? How thoughts could come up? All the weeds covered. That means a sluggard is somebody who doesn't care about his field. That's why I told you. Being punctual or being, uh, under, being able to understand about the time, it has to do with your sense of responsibility. Amen? And here the wise man says, I applied wisdom to my heart. I paused for a moment. Then he says, read that for me. Hmm? A little sleep? <laughs> Say a little sleep. That's enough. At least a little yeast will, will affect the entire dough. Right? And then a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding hands to rest. And power will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. As I finish, Sorry for taking this time. Are you enjoying? Yes. If you have a good heart, you will repent and correct yourself. Amen. Otherwise, it's going to be something else. The Bible talks about, I think Matthew 25, 26, uh, talks about uh, five virgins who were left behind. You understand what I'm saying? What do you learn from this? Five virgins uh, who went to be with the Lord and five virgins were left behind. Don't you think it has to do with the timing? Now I want to tell you how it's going to affect you all the way. Sometimes people are in danger of even missing heaven. Because laziness is something what do you exhibit. It, it, it's a byproduct of your thought life. It is a byproduct of your decision. It's a byproduct of your nature. You have to do things on time because God says, I'm going to come like a thief in such a time when you do not even expect. The Bible says you've got to be ready. You follow what I'm talking about? Hello? It's not about doing things in the church. It's not about doing things in your office. I'm talking about being a person who's driven by an awesome sense of time. Jesus always was driven by a sense of time. He said, I got to finish. Now this is a day. I got to finish my assignment. And night is coming where nobody can any longer work. And he's the one who said, I'm going to come like a thief and you do not know. Suddenly it will happen. Two will be in the field. One will be taken away. One will be left behind. Husband and wife, they'll be sleeping on the slim cot. One will go and the other one will be left behind. So the parents, the kids, whatever it is. I don't think in the church everybody is going to be in heaven. No. That day is going to be a day of separation. Between the sheep and the goats. But until they are separated, I want to tell you. They were all together. The sheep and the goats, they were together. Right? All the ten virgins and the five wise and five who were foolish, they were all together. But God says, I'm going to come like a thief. If you're not ready, you will not make it. You understand what I'm saying? If we don't we'll live with a sense of urgency, what do you do? You go to the office, you go to do anything. If you don't have a sense of urgency, I need to be there. I need to be there on time. I got to do it anywhere. Train, as a, train yourself as a lifestyle. Amen? Otherwise, you do not know a lot of things would be delayed in your life. I've seen some of the best people, some of the people who are so much gifted and talented, they don't go anywhere. They're stuck, stagnated. In fact, nobody wants them. You know, it's because of the attitude. Because they don't display their character of being a good leader. Be responsible. Amen? We are all learning, right? Amen. But don't be a habitual latecomer. Keep on saying one reason all the time. 
<laughs> will develop a sense of hypocrisy as the time goes by you know why you want to do but you can't deliver <laughs> are you with me or not that's why one committed person one shall put thousand to flight two shall put 10000 flight i want to tell you anywhere you find one committed person even 50 people cannot equal that person anywhere be it in any company be it in any ministry or anywhere one person even 50 or 100 cannot match because that one person is so trustworthy it could be trusted i want to tell you god would like to interest a lot of things in your life amen when you try to be punctual taking care of your field assignment and be diligent always and working on those things the lord will add more the one who is faithful with little things he'll be given much things hallelujah i pray this word will continue to motivate you and if you're struggling in some other things i pray that the roots will be dealt today by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of his word. That you would realign yourself, you know, restructure yourself, your mind, your soul and spirit. From today, starting from tomorrow, I pray that you will do what is required of you. No matter what the hell comes against you. Anything that coming to hold you back, the enemy will fight you. Always remember, the enemy will fight you. Because it doesn't want you to give the best to God. It doesn't want you to give the best in your workplace. You understand what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart, with all your might. But do it, not unto man, but do it unto the Lord. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Amen. Amen. I pray that in the days to come, all of you will diligently work on those things and display good characteristics of being a good leader. Hello, close your eyes. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, oh, lift your hand and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Tell God, Lord, help me to be free from the spirit of procrastination. To be free from every kind of delay in my life. Anything that's habitually holding me back from moving on time. To keep in step with the spirit. I pray that you will help me Lord. Oh, give thanks. With a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One. Give thanks. Because is given Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy Jesus given Jesus Christ His Son And now Let the weak say I am strong Let the poor say So what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because so what? Oh, Jesus, 
your hand and say, God, I may be weak, but give me grace. I want to be responsible. I want to understand, oh God, there's a time, there's a procedure. I want to be a great leader, motivating people, inspiring people, being an example. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say to God, Lord, help me to break free from all these things. Oh, give me a heart of obedience. Give me a heart of love. Give me a heart of passion. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord, to change myself. Help me, Lord, to change my ways. Oh, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord done for us and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because the one the Lord Lift your hand, everybody, and say, Let the weak say, I am strong. Oh, let the poor say, I am rich because so understand the time of your activity of God in our lives. Help us, O oh God, to keep in step with the Spirit every single day. When the Lord spoke to Philip saying that, now move and join yourself uh, with the chariot. He acted on time. Oh, Rakamosia. Oh, Riantirama. He told Ananiah, now go to the house of Saul of Tarsus. And pray for him. You went and obeyed. Father, sometimes if you're not sensitive, we will miss God's supernatural work in our lives. So, Father, I pray that you will help me and everyone who listen to the word today. Lord, to develop a heart and a mind to be head of everything, oh God. 
like we are commanders we are generals in the army we are in a war we cannot lack behind but we will be always in the friend just like jesus the bible says you go ahead of us the shepherd is ahead of us we want to go ahead of father i pray that everybody who struggles with this thing i pray that you will speak to them give them a heart of change break every kind of bondage every kind of chain that causes the habitual lord lord thing in their lives so that they can break break free and be able to move forward i bless god's people in jesus christ mighty and powerful name we pray god's people say Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? God bless you. Thank you.